Yeah, greetings, Final Fantasy Randomizer. Uh, we are here for game three of Cheese Nader versus Life Reboot. Uh, all the marbles, win or go home. So it should be a fun race to watch. Uh, we got Hate uh, in the commentary booth. And yeah, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, making sure that uh, Life Reboot's stream isn't paused because he's still on the blue screen for some reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, we've got a pretty decent one today. Uh, we have, well, game three of Life Reboot versus Cheesinator. Uh, this is actually going to be to decide who gets it. Yeah, uh, I remember, I think their game one, Cheesinator got three into 56 on Chaos uh, and ended up losing that as a result. And then game two, he just was a little bit ahead and managed to close it out. So it should be a close race. I think in both races, both runners were in Topher at the same time. So yeah, this, this should be a pretty good race. Awesome, I awesome. Did, I did not bet on this series because I was like, I don't really know who's going to win this one. They're both pretty good, so... And I have, uh, well, got to fix this right quick, apparently. Uh, yes. <laughs> there we go. All right, so the parties that were drafted, uh, Life Reboot, as the higher seed, had the choice of the first pick, and he chose Fighter. Now, these fighters, I can definitely understand why he chose, because if you notice on the screen... He's got plus 10 hit percent and a katana right out the gate. Now, Cheesinator followed that with Black Belt, Black Belt, because Cheese is a fan of the Black Belts. But this might be a bit problematic, given that they have the minus one MDEF per level bursting right now. And uh, yeah. Life Reboot decided to follow up with, you know, I don't want to be fully without magic, and toss the Red Mage in. Yeah, and no, I, I mean, he decided to, you know, not be a complete troll and give them some magic. So I'm sure Cheesinator was probably glad to see the Red Mage. I, I don't know. I feel like he probably was not prepared to play a four melee party, but <laughs> thankfully Life Reboot rescued us from that. I apologize, one of my uh, roommates had to pop in and ask a question about me. Um, so I missed the question there. I am sorry about that. Uh, was there a question? I mean, I don't, there was a question in chat if this is the very first game. Uh, yes, it is the very first Final Fantasy, as you can tell by these glorious graphics. Yes, these wonderful 8-bit graphics. And yeah... Uh, and we are just about ready to see our runners start off on screen. They should be going probably within the next few seconds. And we are off. All right, so as expected, we got them running into the magic shop. All right, we got Life 2 actually learnable by that Red Mage. And Lightning 3 and Fire 3. Ooh. Yeah, it's some pretty good starting magic. Uh, Life 2, pretty huge. Um, curious to see... You know, I'm definitely one of those black belts is going to get killed off because there's no point in having two. But wonder what they're going to do with that fighter. If they're just going to keep him around as a, as a tank. I would probably keep him around a bit, um, especially since I am a fan of never leaving a black belt alone until they are 21. Um, yeah. Just below that, they're just too too vulnerable. All right, so it looks like the first encounter off the hard reset is not that far off. And the second one is real quick thereafter, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, generally, if you get a encounter before the Temple of Fiends, uh, it's like a reasonably viable overworld grind. So. Yeah, no, this was... This looks to be a very grindable encounter table, at least. Yeah, assuming that there is an overworld grind. Yeah. 
Yeah, provided it's not just our all, you know, Anklios and our Anklios. Well, yeah. she's Nada running into a couple of things in Topher that went, mm, you know what, we're just going to take care of some of those party members for you right now. Yeah, getting a nice chunk of cash there. Uh, it's always nice to have a few thousand to start the game off. Yeah, and a horribly bad dagger and then a piece of crap. Well, not piece of crap armor, but, you know, cloth plus four. It's better than nothing, only technically. Oh, my. Something stone life reboots party. I didn't see what that was. I think it was the zombies. Um, I'm not sure if it was stone touch or if it was glance, but either way, life reboots got a couple of statues, and I think he's probably going to be pretty happy with that. Yeah. Um, oh, it's the zombies oh, with Brack. Got zombies it. Zombies with Brack. That's a little bit scary. I think Life Reboot's probably pretty happy right now, though, given that he's got the two black belts out of the way, and now he can just run with that fighter with the katana and 10% hit. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have any interest in running the black belt, then yeah, that's, this is great. Um, All right, and I don't we know. got the ship out of the king and the crystal from Sarah. That's actually kind of convenient. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice starting items. Ship definitely helps speed up early travel a bit. And uh, yeah, crystal it's always great to have because you're gonna check Matoya Cave anyway. So yeah, I mean you're right there. And at least softs are cheap. They're only 150 each. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see. I don't think there was any save items there though. So we're still on the lookout for some save items. Yeah. Well, you can buy houses. They're a little expensive to purchase right now, but better to have something than nothing. Alright, Cheesinator using uh, one of the uh, starting tents to you know, drop his save here before Matoya to see if there's anything of note, and then to potentially reset back if needs be. Matoya's well, closet, a little bit of cash, and a chest. Probably charm. never resetting out of the incentive item, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I, like... could under I could understand resetting out of it if it was like the tail or the power bonk or the roost stick or even the loot because you can come back and get them. I guess. I mean, you just want the 5% like, experience bonus at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that little bit of extra cash, that's going to be they're probably close to good enough to get Light Reboot at least through level 3 magic. Well, and Cheesinator as well, since he grabbed that same cash. Alright, let's see what the pirates got. I guess is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pirates themselves generally have, you know, garbage hit points, and they just have XP and money that, to be freely given away to the players. As long as you don't get, you know, absolutely bad luck. Alright, and we got a ruby from the pirate. Just gotta get the canal, and then you can pop on out and, you know, see if Sarda has anything of note. Mm, pro rings for sale, though. 15k. A little high. Yeah. It's definitely a little bit expensive. All right, white magic level two. We've got harm four in Viz two cure four. Black yeah, magic level good. two. Nothing. So great. We've got level two white magic to use. <laughs> well, at least it's pretty good. I mean, the harm four is going to be great for ice cave and for uh, marsh cave, and you know, in Viz two never hurts to have in Viz stacks. And even the high seas have a quick encounters off the off the hard reset. It's just not fun. Yeah, I mean, resetting out of it is pretty fast, but Cheese Nader is gonna go ahead and take a little bit of money. Yeah, for me, it's mostly the annoyance of the uh, being interrupted. Yeah. 
This is why when I uh, roll seeds for myself, I tend to put the encounter rate at about 0.3.5, because... Uh, because I like the uh, puzzle aspect of trying to figure out things rather than walking and getting interrupted constantly. Alright, we've got Ruse that is going to remain unlearned. And nothing of note in White Magic at level 3. Alright, Ice 3 and Bane, though, for Black Magic, which, you know, that at least gives you something for getting through Volcano, and really, if you feel cheeky, that gives you something for dealing with uh, Carrie and Kraken, or not Carrie, but Kraken and Tia. Yeah, floater on sale for 15k there, so we're gonna need 15k <laughs> as fast as possible. Yeah, that is a really good find. And level 4 Magic, we got Brack. Level 4 white was eh, nothing of import. And actually, I think I saw warp at level 4 as well. Which, given that we've seen neither hide nor hair of exit, warp going to be useful for getting around. Now, I don't agree with Life Reboot taking this one arachnid encounter instead of just resetting. Eh. Oh. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Unless... right one step away. It's yeah. Pretty unfortunate. Ooh, unrunnable werewolves, though. That's... Ugh. Yeah. I mean, the thing about this right now is you don't actually have a lot of charges of uh, offensive magic, so unrunnable encounters are... yeah. He just goes ahead and resets out. Yeah. You don't want to waste half your magic on one fight. Yeah, especially when it's werewolves and, you know, just, you know, they're not going to give you good XP. You're not going to really get much out of it. It's just, just going to slow you down. I wonder if Cheese is going to do any extra greed check. Okay, well, that's what I was just wondering if he was going to be doing there. Life Reboot not want to take a chance with those zombies there and just dropping a spell just to be safe. Ooh. Some kind of zap item? You know, the zap sword? Yeah, that is the defense sword reskinned. Okay, yeah. That's... It's nice to give one of your melees something to do. Well, Ooh, and that red mage can actually swing the defense sword by default. Alright, we got the canal out of marsh. What do you mean by default? Uh, the uh, bonuses gives them the defense sword. Okay, I wouldn't say that's de default. But... Well, at this point, by default, yeah, you know, doesn't have to promote for it. Is how I, how it is, uh, how it is intended. Okay. Well, we got life too. Oh, mute. That's fun. Oh, grand. At least it's just on the mucks and you can run away from them. Yeah, and the Red Mage and Black Belt running, rolling a huge amount of plus luck increase. So this party is actually pretty good at running, despite it really should be terrible at running. Yeah. Well, and that Blue D decided to make a quick lunch out of Life Reboot's Red Mage. But yeah. Fighter at least got away, so he's just having to run his way out. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a little tricky since... Okay. I mean... Yeah, that Zap zap might be able to carry him out of here. Zap in the pile of heal pots. Might not even be a terrible idea to unstone one of those black belts just so that you get out of here. Uh, then you have to worry about getting it killed or, you know... Turning it to stone again. And light or and cheesinator gonna go in and do the marsh top play as well, cause That's well gotta get the cash. For a reboot. Ooh. Yeah, I saw some brack zombies, I think. Ooh, no so good.
a feeling those zombies are going to be a bit of a bit of a bane to the runners until they at least, you know, get through Earth Cave. Bane, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a very fun spell because it's extremely accurate and uh, yeah, not much you can do unless you got a ribbon. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Getting through uh, Marsh here with just two party members that are like level five is honestly going to be pretty tough for life reboot. Especially with that blue D at Guardian. But uh, Cheesinator, after clearing Marsh top, all he got out of there was a Great Axe plus two, Silver Gauntlet minus three, and 2,700 gold. So not what he was looking for, honestly, because he probably wanted to get that floater. Oh boy, and the scums have lightning too. Glee. Ah. Yeah, life reboot gonna unsoft one. Hopefully this black belt will take the punch for us. Yeah. You black belt, go up there and get punched. Alright, and Cheesenator found out that the shadows have blizzard. That's going to be a fun one once you head on over to Melmond. But Life Reboot once again getting that canal and trying to get out of Marsh. Hey, yeah, Scum did his job. Took out the uh, Black Belt for him. <laughs> well, it looks like... Okay, it's barely hanging on here. This is a pretty unpleasant Marsh cave here. Yep. Bridge boss at the 13 minute mark, guys. Cheese Editor is going to go check the uh, first couple of loose chests in uh, Dwarves. Loose canoe in Dwarf Closet. Alright. That's one of our loose already out of the pool here. I think that had to be there because I don't think they had really anything else. They got the canal. They could have gone oh, over to. Uh, okay, they, they got the canal. I didn't see that. Yeah, they could have gone over to uh, visit the sages. They've also got the ruby, which put Sarda on the table. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't see that they got the canal. And she's near to pick up that dragon sword, which he's going to try and sell for the floater. Not going to have enough money, I don't think, so. Uh, might go to Crescent Lake here. Uh... Oh, Marsh once again did it to life reboot. Take that canal away from him again. You know, the sad thing is that the canal is actually not even required at this point <laughs> because. We know where the floater is, and we know where the canoe is. So. Yep. All right, and it looks like Cheese is making the play to go turn in the ruby and hit up the, uh, well, hit up Sarda and see what he's got. Yeah, uh, probably really interested in those chests along the way, hoping to get a few thousand gold out of here. Could also look to see what's the Hall of Giants on the way back. Maybe yeah. look for a grind. Yeah, nah, I, I don't hate that play. Oof. Didn't get away, but got away on the second round. Oh, ghouls have stun touch. Well, that's that's no fun. Yeah. Okay, you got a cube. That's sky access. Yep. Sky, sky, sky. Yeah, ice plus three. That's, that's a good weapon, but I'm I think he may just end up selling that for cash to get that floater. 
probably. I, I would... It's understandable to do so. Yeah, I mean... It seems like he's committing to maybe a black belt here, whereas life reboot is just going to go with the, uh, the fighter. And life reboot once again, getting his fighter turned to stone this time because zombies are jerks. And running into that unrunnable werewolf pack, but at least he was able to get away this time. Well, get away slash murder them. Now, does Life Reboot do that same cheeky check of dwarves, or does he actually, you know, decide to fade that until later? That's going to be a bit of a bit of a decider here. Yeah. All right, Life Reboot finally out of Marsh, dropping a save item as soon as he gets out because he doesn't want to go back in there. Ooh, yeah. a Brack Sword. Hopefully, Life Reboot makes it over to Dwarf Cave. It does look like he's headed in that direction, so yeah. he's going to get his uh, his canoe as well. And Frosty's had Blizzard. That's a, that's a little on the nose. <laughs> and Bridge Boss for Life Reboot at 18 minutes. See that furious smashing of the A button. All right, so you just pull the canoe out of dwarves after you've spent, you know, 10 minutes trying to get the canal out, and you know that the floater is for sale. What's going through your mind at this point? Well, I'm pretty much just thinking, like, hmm, did Cheesinator make it over here, or did he just take the canal and leave? Because I think a lot of people would potentially just skip those dwarf cave two chests and just go for it with the canal. So you might actually be feeling pretty good, like, that you found that. But unfortunately for him, Cheesinator also made that play, so... Um, but, yeah. Yeah, see? You, you could also be thinking, man, I just spent five minutes getting that canal and I don't need it. Yeah, <laughs> that that would be the thought more going through my head is, oh, stupid bloody canal. <laughs> yeah. Looking to sell anything that he can, hoping to get the cash to buy that floater. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to have enough either, but... Uh... Yeah. Alright, I don't think there was anything really worth grinding. Cheesinator did spend quite a bit of time over here, though, I will say, and all he got is like a Brack Sword out of it. Which, you know, Braxword, that's nothing to nothing to laugh about or to write off, because right there, that saves you casts for of Brack versus, you know, Tia Kraken. Puts them a yeah. bit easier on the table. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you're just looking to kill them with two A buttons uh, with the Black Belt, but it is nice to have. Yeah. Sharks killing off the fighter. Maybe Cheesinator is actually happy that that happened. We'll, we'll see. Alright, looks like Life Reboot sold the farm. And still didn't quite have enough. Oh, selling that Brack Sword to get the floater. Yeah, I mean, at this point you just you just need to get the floater, so... All right, there is floater for Cheesinator. 15k is like not even that bad. It could have been like 30k. <laughs> oh, easily, easily could have been much more expensive. That is a super cheap floater. Yeah. And it looks like Life Reboot is taking the time to do some killing outside of Elfland to try and get the last couple of thousand gold, which I think he should have now. But the dogs go, hey, we want attention too. Yeah, this is a little bit... I think there's, like, some very quick encounter after, like, one or two steps or something, like, back-to-back. -back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Cheesinator. One gill exactly after uh, buying warp. 
That that was that is perfect budgeting right there. Yep. <laughs> Won't be able to use the inn, so hopefully he's got some spell cast. Eh, he had some tents. All right, life reboot, getting a floater, but uh, didn't have any cash to get those level four spells. Didn't get that brack and that warp. Cheese in here, going to. Gonna go. Oh, okay, he's just checking for uh, encounters here in the desert, looking yeah. for a grind. All right, so we got steak and wings, and steak and potentially wings, and steak and wings going nope. Yeah, I feel like this is very optimistic to look for a grind at this point. Uh, he's gonna res his. Fighter, which is probably a good idea since they're like level six. Yeah, and you know, plus ten hit percent, and that ice sword plus three. Yeah, that's actually pretty big damage. Yeah, the black belt hitting for seven damage. Yeah, not so good. Yeah, the Tyro is looking pretty low HP uh, at least for us, so that's good. That looked like had maybe three fifty or something like that. Yeah, not too much. Alright, now, where is Life Reboot heading towards? I'm thinking probably going to fly right on over to Sarda, pick up the item from there, maybe check the uh, maybe check the Titan's Tunnel, just to be safe, because we've seen somebody get burned on the Titan's Tunnel before. And Karant, thanks for the raid. Welcome on in, everybody. Like, Cheesinator is going to take off. I think he only checked two of the encounter zones, but uh, he did get a few levels out of there with the Tyros. Yeah, uh, I think he was probably going to be coming down, down here, you know, pick up some heal pots, and maybe do some grinds in a place that's a little safer. Yeah, the Tyros are decently safe, but... They're not given a ton of experience. He only has like five in or six incentive items or something, so you probably want to go collect some more before committing to that kind of grind. Yeah. Hit your freebies. Alright, and the sages with a bottle. Old men in a circle passing around a bottle. Yeah, no, there's, there's nothing <laughs> uh, suspicious about that. Yeah. Nothing to see here. <laughs> move along, move along. <laughs> Crushing Gaia with his floater, uh, Cheesinator. It's a, I'm gonna visit the Gaia here. That's a perfectly fine response to Gaia. Period. <laughs> All right, chain. Uh, I think that's the only armor we've got so far. Yeah. How much armor does Chain minus one give? Is it like ten or twelve or something? It's remember. it's not that much. Um, yeah. Let's see what Fairy has for us. Alright, we got Quake at level 6. And Fairy has the tail. Yeah, it's not really very useful for Cheesinator. Probably not looking to promote. Uh, life Reboot will like that, as he can get life 2 on his, his fighter. Yep. Life 2 and Invis 2. I pretty much expect that we are gonna see Life Reboot head from Gaia directly on over to the Cardia Islands. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely want to promote as soon as possible so that you get those levels when you hit 15, or those uh, magic charges. Alright, checking out the Northwest Quadrant. And more steak and wings. Yeah, I mean, this is like a okay grind, uh, but it's definitely not like the best. Uh. Yep, and as expected, life reboot zoom in right on over to the Cardia Islands. Ooh, Ooh. ribbon out of the first one and a pro ring out of the second. Yeah, that's that's some pretty pretty solid gear, even if he doesn't find a loose here. Oh, oh. T-Rex sighting. 
Let's see if we can do this. T-Rex only hit that tank for 114 points of damage. That's actually not too shabby. And then he eats him. Never mind. Yeah, we got life too, though. We can we can just keep rezzing him, so that's pretty good. You uh, wake up and take the attacks again. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, it looked like the T-Rex had like 700 health or something, though, so it wasn't like... Probably going to be pretty tough to do a solo grind on this. Yeah. Alright, that's Cardia, or Cardia Swampy, just cash, nothing too much, but uh, Life Reboot's walking it out, because, well, he kind of broke. Alright, so it looks like first encounter is that Anklio, second encounter is the T-Rex. Life Reboot, get an Ice Shield minus three, and fighting a Rub Stick. Well, the Black Belt is starting to punch for a little bit of damage. Still not enough to be able to solo these, though. Yeah. This is still, like, this is still don't leave your Black Belt unattended. Yeah. And he is oh. out of life charges. And he has no houses, so yep. it looks like we are probably going to have to go... Well, he's going to keep trying, but I don't know if this is going to work too well. Yeah, I'm not so sure that this is going to be viable. 75 and 145, yeah, that's not going to do it. Yeah. And Life Reboot heading into Volcano. Well, going to try it again. Yeah, I mean, that fighter was doing, like, the majority of the damage, so... Yeah. It's gonna be pretty tough with what we got here. Volcano is, uh... You know, it's... Tends to have, a, like, a lot of loose on these flags and a lot of good gear, so... Uh, if he finds the second loose here, uh, he's in a pretty good spot, despite the marsh cave problems. Yep. Well, especially since Cheesinator kept trying to uh, take those fights. Oh, and it looks like something in the giant iguana has stun touch. Ah, oh, the iguana has stun touch. Fun. Cheesinator heading back up to Crescent Lake to hit up the inn and ah, and the item shop. Okay. Yeah, want some houses. Giants just refusing to die. Yeah. Uh, looks like. Ooh. Was this the trap tile? This is a trap tile, yes. Uh, okay, I was like, he could just run, but. At this point, I think he's like, all right, I've spent enough time here. I'm going to try and get through this. And what are you... Why was he using the items? Is he... Uh, does he want the... I guess he wants the... I guess he wants the Red Mage to stay alive, and that's it. Yeah, maybe he's trying to switch to, like, a Black Belt two-man here or something. Interesting. Man, the Giants will... Slowly kill your party, I suppose. Oh, no, this one wasn't a uh, trap tile. This was that was just, oh, a, just a random encounter. Yeah, that was a wild encounter, and yet it looks like he is swapping to black belt. Interesting. I guess it's a good thing he didn't actually go promote yet. I think he's probably going to yeah. take those, uh, take the giants for a little bit, maybe before he tries to go find another grind. Yeah, I'll have to ask him about that in the game, like, because it seemed like he was going to go with the fighter, and then it seems like maybe he's changed his mind. Yeah, at this point, I think it's... I think he's not sure what he's going to do right now. All right, he's buying the accoutrements for a, uh, for a desert grind right now. Yeah, definitely looks like that. Um, I don't think he has enough save items, though. Yeah, he uh, went to go buy some cabins, but overspent. 
Yeah, he's a little bit optimistic on his financial situation right now. <laughs> Well, Cheesenator is continuing his desert grind. This is like, he has to keep three people up until he gets at least 21, and then he could probably try with the black belt. Yeah, it looks like Life Reboot's going to go back to that uh, giant tile. Or he's going to go check the other tiles and see, but... I'm kind of surprised he actually didn't go check the desert, given the he knows the encounter table is real quick. Right, checking out the armory, cure two helm. Oh boy, Iguana's getting the jump and just immediately stun touching. Well, hopefully he gets away. Uh, oh wow. Right. Well, we got we got life too. Yeah, fine. This, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> All right, check the spike tile, and it's just those unrunnable cobras. Womp womp. I'm wondering why he went for the uh, melee swap at this point. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, have to uh, have to ask. But, I mean, like I would understand if you found like some like you know S tier like I tile or something. Like, okay, let's just do the black belt. But I don't know. Yeah, finding well, giant tile, and that it is not not something that would inspire me to change. Yeah. Right, and it looks like Cheesenator's Black Belt is now hitting for 400 points of damage plus and just hit level 23, so congratulations, you're of legal drinking level. <laughs> Alright, Mux with Mute and then Heat. Or Mute and Heat, I should say. That Black Belt just cannot stay alive. It's level 8, the other ones are level 10. Oh, level 9. And the fighter also had armor, whereas the black belt is running around uh, just entirely streaking around like a child who's, you know, a child who knows that pants are the enemy. Yep. This is my favorite chest in the game right here. Yeah, Volcano 15, a.k.a. the bad hairpin. I hate this bloody chest. Yeah, I just usually pretend it doesn't exist. That's my strategy. It's it's not a bad strategy. Man, this, this is a very thick T-Rex here. Popping out, dropping, probably, yeah, dropping a house. Gonna go back in. Probably gonna head downstairs, check out the Agma tile, and see if there's anything worth there. Meanwhile, Cheesenator has got his black belt up to level 26. It's two shot in the T-Rexes now. Yeah, if he gets like good RNG on the, the damage. Oh my, okay, they have higher than 800 hit points, so three shot in. Yeah, it's like two to three, but he'll 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 start two shotting them once he gets another hit. Yeah, once he hits 32, he'll definitely start two-shotting them. The important thing is they're not one-shotting him, so... Yes. Now, for those who are unaware, um, if you don't want to walk all the way down to the Agma room to check what's on the Agma tile, the room that uh, Life Reboot is in right now, and the chest he's about to check, if you go to the front of that chest as opposed to the side, you can check and see what the Agma tile is. This is like a very aggressive volcano dive, by the way. Um, I'm not sure what his plan is to kill Carrie. I mean, he got a hold shirt there, which, you know, if you land that could definitely be pretty big. But I don't think we've seen Nuke or Fade. 
Okay, there is the second loose, the adamant in dwar or in volcano. I'm not sure what you want to call that one, but the upper uh, upper left of volcano. Yeah, that's that's definitely making this play worth it. Uh, now he's effectively in no mode. Um, doesn't need to check any more chests than he wants to. And he's also got a ribbon already, so like you could pretty much just skip every chest for the rest of the game. But he does have to get out of here somehow, which is honestly going to be non-trivial for him. Yeah. And honestly, given that they have that fighter with the Ice Sword plus three, that would primarily be my carry goal, or my carry takedown goal. All right, this is a lot of experience here if he can actually get through without dying. Well. All right, we get the cast off. Not killing the, the yeah. whiz mummies, though. Yep, way to low roll there, there Nuke. Yeah, hopefully we get turn order. Ooh, oh, lucky this... dodge. Oh. Oh, my. All right, well, Nuke's getting some levels. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice 10,000 experience there on the nuke. Probably have preferred it to be on the black belt. Looks like Cheesenator is either done with the grind or going to go shopping. Ah. He's resing his party. I think he probably hit 32 and went, yep, I'm done. Interesting. I'm just going to go to 32. I mean... He doesn't have a ribbon, and that is problematic because the black belt without or with that minus one M death per level, it's going to be vulnerable to a lot of stuff. Did we see fast? I don't think we've seen fast either. So. Uh, we have not yet seen fast, I think. So yeah, w without fast, the thirty-two black belt is really not going to have the best damage. Um, like, in Topher especially, like, without a way to buff it, you're really just not going to do any damage, so. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's really going to depend upon how Topher rolls, but as we've seen with these seeds, Topher, Topher hasn't rolled kind in a while. Um, All right, Smithy McBeard Smith says, here, have a giant metal slab. I'm a little surprised that Cheesinator cut the grind short, though. But interesting. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, you and I both. That's that's not something I would have expected. I would have expected a full 42 grind, given that he was at the point where he was, you know, one two shotting those T Rexes. And yeah, the T Rex grind is like pretty fast to get from like 32 to like say 40. Well, speaking of fast, level five, slot one. All right, so that's pretty good. So, and wall that will actually be pretty useful. And we get the saber block out of ice. That's also something that you're gonna want if you're gonna roll with like a sub forty-two black belt. His life reboot has gone in. Gotten his slab translated in the time that it took me to remember I needed to mark that. Now, I do think Cheesenator has done a smart thing by also bringing that fighter back up, because, once again, that is a good, strong ablative meat shield. And... Yeah. is he doing the sky play, or is he... nope, sky, sky, sky. Yeah, if you're running a two-man, like, you really just need, like, double the levels that you normally expect to need, because it's just... Like, you just take so much more damage onto the two characters, you need a way to get through fights. Yeah. Cheesenator running into the mummy pack in the wild. Here we see the mummy pack in its natural habitat. The Mirage Tower. <laughs> yeah, I'll be curious if he opens some chests because honestly, that 32 black belt doesn't have much end def. Uh, with only the three per level. Yeah. Because of the analysis, that's it's what, like, 100 or so end death? So, 
very risky to take that through Topher. Very much so. Um, I expect he might open some of the greed chests on Sky 3. Um, I don't think we'll see him open anything on Sky 1. And Sky 2 is just right out. Except for the incentive chest, I should say. But given that he's got warp, I would be surprised if he doesn't open the uh, chests on Sky 3. Oh, wraiths have thunder. That's... well, he's got a ribbon at least. Alright, and we get the TNT from Sky. I do like the fact that Cheesinator's Red Mage is also of a fairly decent level. He's level 25 now. Um, means it's going to have, you know, some survivable level of hit points. And she's not hitting any of the chests on Sky 3. Not interested. That's... Um, yeah. Did they find Wall? I don't think so. Uh, Wall was at level 5, slot 3. Level 5, okay. So, probably not going to get that. I don't know if that's actually learnable after promotion or not. I, I don't know. <laughs> the way I tell if it's learnable or not is I go and I look and see if they raise their hands. <laughs> Memorizing things is hard. I mean, level 5 and beyond magic just doesn't really exist. It's on a different page of the menu. I forget that it's there. Yeah. All right, and are we going to see a robot chicken? Come on, robot chicken, robot chicken, robot chicken. Not a robot chicken. Wrong encounter. Boo. At least he only got a small pack of these things since they're unrunnable. Are we gonna see? Come on, chicken, chicken, chicken. Huh, huh. Aww. Now I'm sad. <laughs> oh, and those Frosties in Ice Cave are unrunnable. Yeah, but we should be able to get through here. We should. Yeah. I think this is like life reboots, like third or fourth wipe in Ice, so he's not going to be happy when he sees that it's all for a uh, power gauntlet. Yeah. All right, and here we have Carrie, or Tiamat. Tiamat. The other thing. I can brain, really, I swear. Four hits, 47 damage. Not a whole lot of damage there. Ice 3 coming out doing you know, tickle damage. Alright, punch. 8 hit, 624. And that's after one saber. Carry retaliates, though, and has hit that black belt twice so far. Dropping a cure 4. That's not an unwise idea, methinks. Now, I'm not sure if I agree with Life Reboot warping out of Ice Cave immediately without having checked any of the spike tiles there. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, I mean, unless, yeah. he's, unless he's going for a desert grind right now, that is a risk that he took. Like, that is a risk I'm not sure I agree with. Yeah, I mean, probably want to check at least the ones that don't take any encounters, like increase your encounters. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, it's getting pretty late into the seed to be starting a grind, so uh, maybe we'll see the fighter come back to life. Yep. All right, and Narek pulls out the rod for the explosives. Yeah, that is a required item and will get us access to another incentive. So we have Earth Cave, Ordeals, the Robot, and the Lefanish. We still need to find, well, three items, and the ruse stick is out there. So let's see which play is going to pay off first. We got Life Reboot hitting Lefane and getting the loot. All right, so Lefane is required. Let me 
Cheesy Danger is going to be showing us what's potentially in Earth. After taking the time to make sure that the bats that are in his way get ended. Life Reboot running into the Stake and Wings pack and not having the... Uh, not having the chutzpah to be able to take him out right now. Going for Bane and fails and loses that gr or that group. Yeah, I mean, you might want to consider swapping the Black Belt with the Red Mage at this point. Like, the Red Mage... Red Mage has more hit points, has more absorb. Yeah. A cheeky Bane, but, you know, FFR special where, they're, hey, look, there's one, or one thing left on the screen. Time to run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a T-Rex, but there is no way he's going to be able to kill this guy. Yeah, three hits, 98 damage. Yeah, no, he's he's going to go for the Bane, but T-Rexes have disgustingly high M-Def. All right, yeah, three hits, 130. I think they have 200. It, yeah, they have M-Def of lots. And down goes that one. I think that T-Rex wipe is going to discourage him from a desert grind. Which is a bit of a shame, given that we know if he had that fighter still alive, he'd be able to take care of the desert grind, not a problem. Alright, well, Bane actually wiping out all the giants there. And yeah, I think that's really been kind of a big difference in the race, is Cheesinator's kind of kept three party members alive for most of the time, and Life Reboot's been trying to make two-man work. Yeah. Um, Alright, Life Reboot going for the low-level charge into... <clears throat> excuse me. Derp. Into the Sky Palace, and Cheesinator finding the herb in the Earth Armory. So Cheesenator needs to get his uh, slab. Where was that again? Uh, the that... slab came from the adamant, which was adamant? the okay, loose in volcano. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he's the... that that actually is probably gonna give life reboot a bit of an edge if Cheesenator ends up if he finds the oxyl and the full clear C, that could be something that really helps life reboot catch up some time here. Yeah, that's that's got to be Life Reboot's hope at this point. Um, the pivot away from Fighter to Black Belt has cost Life Reboot a little bit of time. Um, and especially since Cheesenator already has his grind done. And down goes Lich, as expected. Orb 2 lit for Cheesenator at the 4956 mark. Cheese heading on over to turn that herb in, and let's see what the herb turns into. Yeah, now that Cheesenator's got that black belt levels, it's definitely a lot more smooth sailing for him. And we get the crown from the Elf Prince. So I guess that's why Astos put him to sleep, was because the Elf Prince stole the crown. <laughs> and we get the Oxy Ale out of Astos. Yeah, so now it's decision time for Cheesinator. Yep. Do you go Volcano and check for Loose? Do you go to Sea and check for Loose? Oh, looks like he is... He's heading to Onrak Continent. Or, no, he's heading to Ordeals first. Ordeals. Ordeals, interesting. So I think for us, we just need to find the key. It's like the only item we don't know about. Yeah, so far. the key is either going to be at the robot, or it's going to be in Ordeals. And whichever one doesn't have the key is going to have the uh, Rue Stick. Rue. Yeah. And uh, those... Air elementals have stone touch. That <laughs> could be a problem in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on to or in Topher. Yeah. 
And it looks like Life Reboot went, yeah, you know what, we're, we're bringing the fighter back. Yeah, let's see how much health he, the fighter has, even at low levels. Yeah. Pretty useful. He's hitting pretty bloody hard, too. Oh, I think it was the good black belt that got stoned. It was. Because that... once he got stoned, that's when Life Reboot brought the other two back up. I see. Now oh, and not checking Life or not checking Sky Three as well. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, I mean he's already got a ribbon, so it's a little bit more understandable. But yeah, the Cheese Nader does not have a ribbon, so that's another way that he can definitely lose. Because that the black belt, you know, only getting three M death per level here, so. Well, Pro Ring, that's useful for Cheese to have on that uh, fighter. I'm wondering if uh, Cheese is going to go clear the Cardia Islands after this, rather than, you know, full clear C first. Alright, Bruise Stick found. He is going to come from Robot. Life Reboot running into the Unrunnable Mud Goal Sorcerer pack. Yeah, the, the Roost Stick, it's kind of a dud item, but it's still pretty nice to have. So it doesn't feel terrible when you do get it. Yep. And, uh, curses. I don't think we're going to see a robot chicken today. This so Life Reboot seems to be on just about the same encounter part of the table as, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as Cheese was. Yeah. Unfortunate. Yep, and life reboot pulling up to carry. Crack Tia. Tia man. Yeah. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> See gads. At least I didn't call it my dog's name. <laughs> and Well, there goes Tia Matt. <laughs> yeah. I think you need to mark the Oxale for uh, Cheese Nader, by the way. Probably. Uh, I see. I, I uh, looked away for a moment, and I guess that uh, Life Reboot got the Bane off on Tiamat. Just round one. Here you go, smell this rag. Does this smell like death? Yes, bye. <laughs> Yeah, the Bane, only one out of like seven chance or so, so that's some pretty good RNG for him. Yeah. Although I think he deserves it at this point. <laughs> Ooh, seafood party platter. Yeah, the sixth lobster edition is not the one that you want, though. <laughs> yeah, though most of the time the lobsters have less hit points than the sea snakes, at least. They just oh. hit like trucks made of smaller trucks. And the final the FFR special right there. And Waterfall, aside from having the required key, was a big fat pile of nothing. Alright, there is the Rod for Life reboot. So he's heading on down to Earth, going to be following in the stuff that Cheese had already done. Yeah, so Cheese Nader coming over here to do C, uh, you know, might very well end up full clearing it, and uh, Life Reboot's going to be able to go mode it, so this is potentially some time save here. But Cheese Nader could also find a ribbon here, so that would be very helpful to him as well. It would be. He could also be lucky and stumble on a Masa or a Katana. A katana. There you go. That is knight equivalent. Now you basically have a backup character for Topher. Mm -hmm. 
So just responding to a message in chat, uh, somebody had mentioned that it was their first. They did their. They tried their first rando last night, and they said they were bad at it. Which honestly, that's expected. Uh, you know, that's actually why we have a duckling boot camp coming up here. It's to help our new runners learn the game and you know, get used to the flags, you know, improve their er, improve their game. And after the duckling boot camp, will come the duckling derby, which is a duckling only tournament. Oh, lobsters have sleep. Ew. So yes, Fuzzy Bunny, I would uh, I would definitely recommend that if you had if if you're interested, check out the boot camp. It's it's what got me started in this. All right, looks like Cheesenator is doing the expected play of going Kraken side first, clearing that out, and hoping that it's here. Unfortunately, we know that it's not. Jumpy sea snakes. All right, and this is where life reboots get into Zerb. Sun sword. It's not a bad weapon for something to swing if needs be. Ooh, Agamatile. A little late, but at least you found it. Now you just got to worry about getting the rest of your party members moved off. Yeah. Um. It didn't have too much HP either, but it is very late in the game to be starting to grind at this point. Yeah, but... and trying to get killed by a pack of wizards? Nah, man, nah. You run away, you make sure you strip everyone down, then you go find some zombies or something. The Brax zombies? Yep. <laughs> I would definitely do it. Especially since these wizards are not really hitting that much, and when they do hit, they're not hitting that hard. Yeah, this is going to take 200 years. Yeah. Please, life reboot. R run away from this group. Find something better. Please. I think he just has armor on the fighter, maybe. That's why it's so bad. Yeah, the fighter is not naked. Unless he is trying to get the black mages or the black belts killed and just going to, you know, grind up the fighter. That's not a terrible idea, to be honest. Yeah. And here we go with Cheesenator pulling up to Kraken. I got it right on the first try! <laughs> yeah, I don't think Kraken's too long for this world. Yeah. Right, Fire 2 coming out from Kraken, doing some chip damage. Ruse coming out from that Black Belt Ninja... Or Fighter swinging the Katana, doing 200 plus points of damage right there. <laughs> and... Yeah. 13, it's 1069. Yeah, that's a uh, that's some calamari that has not just been cooked; it has been spread all across the table. <laughs> yeah, Kraken not gonna survive that. Yeah, not so much. I wonder if he's just doing the three-person grind right now because he's not. It doesn't seem like he's actively trying to get the fighter killed off, but he's letting it die. Yeah. Um. Ooh, Cheesenator actually opting to do the Cardia checks before diving Mermaid's side. Interesting. Yeah, maybe he's just gonna skip. Whoa. Okay. Didn't save in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh. All right. Looks like Life Reboot's got hit down to just the Black Belt and the Red Mage, and Cheesenator is about to come on in here and get a, another pack of disappointment out of these chests. Well, no, he's if he keeps checking them, he's going to get that ribbon that uh, Life Reboot found. So. Oh no, I was talking about the specific chest, or that, oh, okay. that specific island. This is, okay. this is the one that pays. So definitely very good that he found that ribbon there. Still, it's only one ribbon, but it's better than no ribbons. Yeah. And he immediately tosses it on his life caster, which 
I think is the right move to do. Because up until Chaos, everybody else is expendable. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Alright, Cheese and Air uh... doing the key locks. Wondering if he's going to do all of the key locks or if he's going to do just a couple of them and then maybe head to Volcano. But probably going to do all of them based off the route that he's going. Yeah, he'll probably skip the Topher ones because those are pretty slow. But yeah, but those also do yeah give it those also do give you a chance to get the uh, spike tiles checked. Well, he doesn't care about that at this point. True facts, true. Uh, Opal minus three is pretty nice since now we actually have something to put on the black belt if we equip the uh, the weapon onto the black belt at some point. Yeah. But... Because black belts, the uh, way that they work is armor. Well, the armor, uh, they're absorbed is equal to their level unless you put any armor on them. If you put any armor on them, it drops down to, well, whatever the armor has. And if you put just a ribbon on them, congratulations, you have a one absorb black belt. Yeah. Which is a little scary. Yeah. Don't do that. One absorb black belt is just going to get crushed. <laughs> Looks like he's doing all the key locks, except for TFC. Because no one likes doing TFC. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's probably not there, right? No, well, we know it's not. And key locks were just disappointment, except for that ice armor plus four and dwarf lock. All right, looks like Cheesenator is heading to Volcano. Going to punch out his last fiend, going to pick up his adamant, and uh, I'll get that stuff going to get that turned in. Yeah, at this point, he's definitely built up a pretty big lead, and with that ribbon, uh, it's definitely going to reduce the chances of a wipe in Topher by a pretty good margin, so he's looking to be in a pretty good spot here. Yeah, though Life Reboot's grind is being a bit quicker. Um, I mean, he is getting it on two people, and he has his Black Belt up to level 26 right now, and that Red Mage is getting pretty swole too. But you know, given that the red mage you know, only started with less or with twenty less hit points, it's gonna be all right, actually. Yeah, definitely gonna have pretty safe party. Now, the big question for Life Reboot is, will he make up the time here? Or, you know, will Topher slow down Cheesinator enough? I mean, he will be able to go mode uh, a lot of these. So, it's not going to be a long time, but he's definitely, like, at least several minutes behind Cheesinator, if not more. Yeah. It, he just took so many wipes early on that... Uh, it's just hard to it's hard to make up that much time. Yeah. And I doubt he is gonna pick up that uh, free katana that's just hanging about in uh, in the sea shrine. So he's probably just gonna keep swinging those ice swords. Now that ice sword is not a bad sword. I mean, it is an ice sword plus three. But you know, katana katana much better. Yeah, the katana is definitely some nice like you know. 150, 200 damage a turn on the fighter, but you know he's got the black belt, so he'll he'll at least have some damage with with fast and the black belt. But I would imagine he's gonna stop at like 32 here. Oh yeah, this late in the game, yeah, no. If you're doing a two person, you stop 32, or you find some way to kill that other person. Hold shirt, I don't want this garbage. <laughs> now that being said, that black or if the hold shirt is the black shirt, that could have provided some more armor for that black belt. Because um, they can't equip the black shirt tonight. Well, today. Oh, yeah. 
That's a blessing that I always forget. The plush shirt one. Yeah, I, if I'm running black belts, I am. If they have a, a a plus any armor thing, I'm generally gonna take advantage of it. Especially if it's like, okay, hey, you can equip the black belt or the black shirt, and you have minus M def. That right there is your time resistance, which means congratulations, you're protected from at least zap. Yeah, it's definitely pretty big to at least have some, something for zap. Right, we've got 30 on the black belt on Cheesinator's side. We have Carrie turned into a pile of squishy, squishy bits, and Cheesinator in his no mode, at least. Getting jumped by some enemies and then just having them run away immediately. Oh, we've made a mistake. Yep. We are sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sir. Please don't kill us. It's just a joke. We just wanted to give you a surprise. We're sorry. We'll leave our present and go. Jeez, get his slab. And slab is translated. I hate doing that. Step outside of a city, accidentally walk the wrong direction, and you step into it again. It's like, ah, stupid, stupid town shapes. Yeah. 35 on that red mage, 31 on that black belt. Thirty-two on the black belt. Bring it up the fighter and the other black belt, and all right, let's roll. Yeah, got the whole party alive. Let's get out of here. And let's go punch a carpet and run. If your boot's gonna have to do that quest turn or that turn in chain. But it's not going to be that bad. All right, there is the loot for Cheese, and Cheese is now full go mode. As long as Life Reboot doesn't go for ordeals, he's got a chance. If Topher is rude. Though, given how rude the early game was, I'm not sure how much rudeness is left for Topher. And we've got the Stone Touch airs on the, er on the uh, air floor... That's pretty much all that we're aware of that's going to be rude. Yeah, you know, I mean, usually it's the fiends that are the, the rudest, so we'll, we'll see if they've got anything. Uh, does have life, too, on the uh, red mage. Got a ribbon. Um, but not a ton of MDF on the black belt, so... Yeah. All right, and down goes Lich for life reboot. Now, Life Reboot is also going to have to do another dive of a volcano because he noped out of there after getting the Adamant the first time. Which, given his levels at the time, I understand. Yeah, that was definitely the right call, but yeah. I mean, I think that overall getting that second loose probably still saved him time, even though he has to redive it, but it definitely was a pretty big gamble. Yeah. To go down there. And the final spike tile, Zombie D. Hmm. Better than a phantom. Everything yeah. is better than a phantom, though. Alright, there is the Oxyale. Or the crown, and turning into the Oxyale. Is it known why the phantom gives, like, two experience? Was that another bug? Uh, I don't think that was a bug. I think that was a... Ha ha. <laughs> like, I think that was just a straight up spite. Yeah, here's this terrible enemy that also gives no experience. Screw he, you. He pretty much. Hits like a truck and is going to make you hurt. Oh my goodness. Another pack of those Blizzard Frost Ds. Yeah, we got, we got Cure 4. 
at least you can run from them. Yeah, it's better than they were in the ice cave where you couldn't run from them. It's just a giant annoyance, and because they were so jumpy, that's, you know, a bunch of time lost. Yeah. This encounter table sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's it is not it's not so hot. <laughs> I'm gonna respect Lich and heal up here. Yeah, I think it was because healing up after you know all of the drag. Oh, oh, nuke. Well, all right. Red Mage survives. Healing was the right idea then. Oh. And Black Belt just one shots the Lich, more or less. Yeah. In this instance, it seemed like at least the healing part of respecting Lich, not a bad idea. Yeah. Alright, here's Carry 1 on Life Reboot's team, or on Life Reboot's side, and an Unrunnable Grey Worms on Cheese's side. Oh boy. And down goes carry one. Oh, and fire three on the Grey Worms. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this is... Okay. Yep. <laughs> this is just a huge time waster. Yep. Time and resource waster. Alright, life reboot. Landing on Onrat Continent, if he decides to hit up the robot first, he will be fine. Interesting, Cheese nader has got the black belt in the front slot. Yeah, I'm wondering why he doesn't actually have the tank up front. Yeah, Bonk seems like that's, that's a great job for Bonk to uh, apply for. Mm -hmm. oh, there there, there we are, that's better. Alright, Terry, Terry 2 coming on up. Fast actually coming out before the punches come out. Oh, damn. 14, 8, 18. Ooh. Bye, carry two. Yeah, that was a typical speed bump black belt fight. But now it comes the real test, because, uh, you know, sometimes these uh, Kraken Tia fiends can be, you know, you don't one-shot them, you two-shot them. Yeah, and in the meantime, they have a chance to just tear your party into shreds. <laughs> All right, meat, but, er, meat sack. You you go stand up front. You're the ablative yeah. meat shield. Yep, yep, look busy. Going for a ruse and a fast. Not a bad idea, I think. Yeah. Fire three. All right. Well, the ablative meat shield has been blown away. Four hits, eighty-two damage. So Kraken is not so dodgy. A little bit absorbent though. Pretty decent roll on that ice three there. Yeah. Oh, four hits, 278. Not too bad. 14 hits. I didn't see how much damage, but Kraken's still alive. Three hits, 138. 14, 808. Alright, so nothing, nothing too scary besides that nuke on Lich, but uh, yeah, getting through so far. Life Reboot got his key from the robot and is now in run and go. And speaking of running, Cheesinator getting away from that six pack of Stone Touch errors before they turned his party into statues. Good job for him. Yeah. Alright, we can put the meat shield back up front. <laughs> All right, here is Tia 2 going Ice 2 to get rid of the Ablative Meat Shield, of course. Three hits, 143 from uh, Katana. Ten hits, 375. This is a thick Tia mat. Fasting up that, that uh, fighter, not a bad idea. Six hits, 387. Okay, well, it was absorbent, but not a whole lot of hit points. Yep. Just chaos left for Cheesinator here, so let's see what chaos has. All right, let me see here. Bonk getting the ribbon, the opal bracelet, uh, pro ring. Yeah, this is 
This is the right play. Yeah, I mean, you really only need the uh, the black belt to survive here, so we're just going to load up everything onto him. There you got weight, we got punch, we got ruse, and we've got fast coming out. So, Bonk got hit pretty hard there, but that's what Cure 4 is for. More ruse. Yeah, that was a big shot. Alright, swing, 3 hits, 94 damage, about what we were expecting. A, a Blade of Meat Shield doing its job. Cure 4 coming out, fixing up that uh, black belt. Tank taking a shot, 3 hits, 172, doing fine though. Saber time. 4 hits, 81 out of the katana. Red Mage getting punched, but still surviving. 4 hits, 191. Saber, Saber. Ice 3 doing negligible damage. And Red Mage getting crushed. 14 hits, 831 out of that. Black Belt, 3 hits, 5 damage. Damage poison out of Chaos. It's a good thing that ribbon got sopped over. 14 hits, 959. Chaos has got to be on its last legs. It's going to do it. 13 hits, 1131. Get your GGs out in chat for Cheesinator. Coming in first with a race time GG time of 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 7 seconds. GGs. Yeah, well, well played by Cheesinator. Um, gonna, you know, take this series 2 1 and move on to the next round. So congratulations to him. Yeah, that is uh, Cheesenair going to be moving on and facing the winner of I think it's... someone. I don't know. I got to find him. I think it's Spell Zap and whoever his opponent is. Oh, yes. <laughs> Spell Zap and Luffy. Yep. Ah, and speak of the devil, good job, Cheesenator. Thanks so much. Yeah. GG to Life Reboot. Um, I haven't seen an indication if he'll be joining us yet. Well, he is going into Topher right now. Um, I think he's probably going to do a dive and see if he can get through it. Yeah, so how did you feel now when you, you know you cut your grind short at 32? Like, were you feeling like the pressure, game three? Yeah, I was. it was definitely game three pressure, plus I saw a lot of stuff line up that said, oh man, you know, if you've got a fighter in the seed, you could actually really be zipping. Um, and mm -hmm. I expected that he would be running the fighter. Um, so I just didn't feel like I could afford the time. Um, you know, hindsight 2020, maybe this would have been a safer seed for a 42 black belt, especially without getting much MDef per level. But that was another reason I cut it short. It was like, I'm going to need a ribbon either way, because the MDef won't be enough. Hmm. Yeah, Cheese Nader initially, or not Cheese Nader, Life Reboot initially did start with a fighter and then swapped to Black Belt uh, midway through. And I just now realized that I've got the. I'm like, I am not looking at the right screen there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he definitely started out with the fighter, but uh, he was having some problems. I think you kind of were like doing like a three man with the fighter and the black belt and that really gave you a lot more safety uh, and he, he took a lot of wipes in marsh and in ice um just he just trying to force the two man through so oh, that's kind yeah, of, yeah. It's kind of what marsh was so scary i tried to clear the top just to get floater money and because i wasn't sure that the zap stick or whatever or the zap sword was going to sell for enough and, and it in fact it was not so i wiped like whatever money i got from the top of marsh and then I uh, still didn't have enough. I went to Dwarves only to get money and ended up getting a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, definitely was a bit of a surprise to see that. But, but uh, you know, that also made your Marsh Cave like trip a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and Life Reboot running into those horribly rude... Uh, Frost Dragon's getting his half his party taken out. And one of his party members got turned to stone somewhere. Yeah, I think it was um 
the seed was like early in the air, right, with the with the floater in the shop and the canoe and dwarves, plus life to cure for night landable, plus really early tail, like tail on like ice or sarda or something. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, all you have to do is just promote a knight and like grind up life two and cure four. This thing's gonna be invincible. So that's kind of what I thought he would do. Yeah, the uh, tail was from the fairy, which you oh, know that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. came pretty quickly given that the uh, bottle was from the sages. Yeah, and then you could also equip that katana that you found as well. Mm -hmm. Life reboot, disrespecting Lich, because that's what Lich deserves. Uh, I didn't see it. I don't think he got nuked. I think he got punch off first. But then running into that unrunnable Grey Worm pack. At least he didn't get jumped by him. Um, the other two things that made me really unsure about how this and, and nervous to the very end were one, that I was late to the ribbon and cardia. I cleared cardia like way after getting floater, and also that my grind was really haphazard and I was like bouncing between the desert and crossing lake multiple times. Um, and so I just, I just felt like I was not playing optimally in a lot of avenues. Um, so, you know, clocking a, a 118 or something, whatever I ended up at. Um, I just felt like, he, like when I was at 105, I was like, he's got this by 115. He's got to have this by 115. So I just had this, like, huge pressure building. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, game three and, you know, not everything going super smoothly for you. You know, definitely you'll feel a lot of pressure. So, yeah, understandable. Yeah, now Life Reboot had a lot more problems in Marsh than you did. Um, like, he was in Marsh at least a full four minutes longer than you were, and Ice Cave was much more rude to him than it was to you. Like, whereas you were able to get in, get out, uh, the encounter table for Life Reboot said, mm, no, you you get to suffer. Was it a lot of dragons? Yep. Yeah, he had a lot of dragons, and his he had his black belt in the front, but the black belt was only, like, level eight. And he didn't have the fighter up, so he was, just, he was really struggling to get through. Alright, and this is how fast is normally acting, where it goes off, of course, after the punch. And carry deletes Life Reboot's Life Caster. Yeah, that's some pretty bad luck, but, you know, he does still have the Black Belt up. I think he got the Roost Stick, so... Uh, no, he didn't get the Roost stick because oh, he, he did oh, yeah, not. Ordeals, yeah. yeah, he faded ordeals entirely. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty rough for him then. Yeah. He faded ordeals um, <clears throat> because I still needed two items, and so I was like hoping that that one would be Looter Key and Waterfall would be the other. But I, either way, I wanted the info before clearing anything in Sea Shrine. That's a fair yeah. call. Yeah. So you did skip mer mermaids, right? You just yes. You just felt like. You didn't have the time and wanted to make it. I, I needed the, the orb or the items to be on the way to the fiends. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good thing that you uh, hit a volcano before fully clearing mermaids. The the real intent there to leave mermaids is because I had a key, so I needed to do cardia key locks, and then volcano armory was just the closest, densest thing left rather than revisiting mermaids. Yeah. That nah, was a smart play, and it was the right play. Well, life reboot, shuffling his way through these, uh, well, shuffling his way up to Kraken 2 with his big black belt up front. Going with the preventative cure 2. Yeah, that's pretty aggressively located black belt. Yeah. Second black belt punches for 4 damage. Oh, how cute! <laughs> 6 hits, 610 on that Kraken. This one will probably finish it though. Yeah, 7 hits, 531. So he's at least through Kraken 2. Kraken 2 didn't know what to do because the life caster was already deleted. Yeah, Kraken's AI bugged out. Yeah. There's there's no life caster with Thwack. What, what, what do I do? Ooh, life reboot down to 20 something potions. It's like 26, 27 potions left. Got first strike on these. Stone touch airs, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, that's a good thing. Alright, we've got Saber coming out. We've got Cure 2 going out as preventative. We got a swing from the knight, 34 damage. Ice 2 coming out after the cure goes off because why not? Alright, 
Hit Saber, Swing, and once again, Cure 2. So then it's 340. Oh. Oh, no. Is that a rub? Oh, my God. Yeah, that was yeah, a rub. Yep. Carrie went rub, rub, rub. And now it that is bad. down to that fighter with that Ice Plus 3 sword. That is a shame. deletes the other black belt and is in the process of erasing the fighter. This is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Team, Matt, quit playing with your food. Ah, he didn't pick up the Brack Sword. All right, uh -huh. And with that, Life Reboot has forfeited, understandably, given that he knew this one was already done. So get your GGs out and chat for Life Reboot for sticking through that stuff, and I'm going to be dragging him on in right now. GGs, Life Reboot. Uh, Topher was a bit rude to you there. Hi, GG Cheesinator. Uh -oh. Hey, GG Life. I think that Martian Ice was especially rude to me. Uh, Topher was just Topher. <laughs> yeah, you got wiped out of Martian Ice both multiple times. Yeah, unfortunately, with I think four or five attempts in ice to just get a saber bonk that I really probably didn't need, um, I figured at that point it was over. Like, I had already struggled early in marsh, three times diving marsh, just because of uh, uh, the undead there, and then the thunder race and ice were just all over me. It was it was disgusting. Oh yeah, and those so the only thunder wraiths. Yeah, the only thing that I thought um, I know that Cheesinator likes to clear uh, C before volcano. So if there was some like pattern in the oxyale um, coming early for him, or maybe him not grabbing that canoe in. Uh, the uh, dwarves. Uh, that would be my only like way out, um, but it didn't didn't happen. Yeah, no. He uh, Chief Nader ran up to dwarves to try and get cash for the uh, floater, and found the canoe instead. And he was Makes able. Makes sense. He was also able to get uh, get out of marsh a lot easier than you were. Yeah, what happened with marsh? Um, I did the bottom. I had to reset maybe only once going downwards um, and got back up. But then I stuck around to try and clear the top for cash. And I was just about out when some shadows killed me. So I was like, oh crap, there goes, you know, 3K, 4K, whatever I had on me. Um, so I was, I knew I was still short of the floater unless the, the zap sword sold for a ton, but I was hedging that it wouldn't sell for enough. That's why I went up to dwarves, went over, sold what I had, still didn't have enough for the floater, had to do top of earth, reset a bunch of times to stuff killing me there. And eventually with all the money, I think I found a Brack sword there that I ended up selling. And that was what got me the, the floater. Yeah, it was a Brack sword in the bottom uh, left chest room. Yeah, I, I don't know if you did... Um volcano early i found the adamant there and then was contemplating doing carry but then like i stepped on the agama tile and got like almost murdered by a, a whiz mummy pack and yes. uh then i had to walk it out and then come back to volcano later so i i knew that you were gonna um if if you didn't run into all the nonsense that i was running into that that you were gonna smoke me so gg again jeez gg yeah i um i took I mean, this this whole game, right, being game three, being, you know, a very contested series so far, I wanted to change my approach because I felt like the first two games were too much of a coin flip. Like, if one of us doesn't wipe in Topher, the other one, uh, or, like, the, the, the outcomes could have flipped in both games, and I was like, <sighs> so I wanted to change up the draft, see how um, you would do with the Black Belt if you would use it. I felt pretty okay in my ability to pick Black Belt or Fighter, given what the seed presented, and the early floater and the good encounter table said go desert and so i went desert and eventually i th think my last encounter zone i checked i finally found the 900 hp or no there were like a thousand hp t-rexes but i still got to get there because the fighter was doing like 200 300 a hit with the, the ice sword to help the black belt up 
Nice. Yeah, I I struggled against the T Rex. I um, was trying to get something going, and like my first encounter in Topher, um, those uh, undead uh, stone poison both of my, or I guess it was Brack. They bracked both of my um, black belts, and I was just like, well, I guess the game decided for me what I'm going to do for a while. <laughs> and uh, so I was I was running with Fighter, and then somewhere around Volcano, I swapped. And started looking at um, the uh, trap tiles. Uh, I didn't find anything good in ice. I didn't find anything until actually Earth Cave in uh, Lich's closet or whatever. The uh, the top area. I found the Agamos, and then I Ooh. leveled up there to thirty two. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have to ask, why did you decide to pivot away from the um, from the fighter to the black belts? Well, um, like I was saying, the there was a there was a point where I noticed that I was definitely behind uh, grabbing that saber bonk in the ice cave after many dives, and it's sort of like okay, well, in a recent match that I um, watched, uh, and I I forget I forget I'm sorry who it was. It might have been um, uh, versus uh, Shofumaki. I I forget, but um, they had taken the fighter strat and were ahead, and then whoever was their opponent was a uh, black belt and uh, came from behind in Topher to win it. Right. And mm -hmm. I know that that was like a speed option. I know that I was stopping to slow down uh, to get the levels. Um, it's just a, a choice I decided to make because I, I knew at that point, Topher is really the only thing that can possibly let me win here. So if, if cheese is going uh, fighter strats gets deep in Topher and dies, Maybe I can come from behind with a black belt. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Telfer, I mean, even up to the end there, it wasn't exactly free. Again, I didn't go to 42. Um, it hit my black belt. After a ruse charge, it hit my black belt for like 400-something. So instantly, my black belt was under 200 HP. It could have gotten nuked or nucleared or whatever. And thankfully, it didn't punch there again, and I got some turn order for it to cure four. But like that dive wasn't even guaranteed. I could have been resetting, and you would have been right back in it. Yeah, it was a bit of a close one there. Yeah, I commend you, Cheese, for the draft pick. I was not expecting that. Um, and I don't know if that's uh, your strategy. It sounds like maybe it was. I'm definitely more comfortable on Fighter. Um, I maybe should have uh, gone with that uh, after all. But uh, I'm you know, happy that you know, you're going you're gonna to do well in the rest of brackets, I'm sure. So I'd like to see well, you go fly. Really, really uh, enjoyed running against you. Um, the, yeah, the, the draft strategy was what I said earlier with the sort of, I needed to adjust early game or first two games felt like a coin flip, but also, um, because I saw you lead with the fighter pick a couple times, I was like, well, it seems like this really is your comfort. So let me try and make the draft a little less comfortable. I didn't even, I was thinking about black belt thief and I was like, thief makes it too easy to just go three man with fighters. So I'm really going to like make it a choice about two man. Nah, that's a fair cop. That's a fair point there. Um, well, um, excuse me. Uh, sorry, my brain just kind of shut off there. Uh, Gannon's, uh, do you have any further questions for the runners? Oh, it was uh, great to watch you guys play. It was a fun race. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for running. All right, and um, yeah, I'm pretty well out of questions as well. So let's go ahead and take it to final thoughts. So, um. Well, actually, not quite. Now I'm thinking, but I do have questions. So, life reboot. Now that you've been, uh, now that you've been bonked off of this one, uh, got any thoughts on the tournament in itself? Yeah. So I want to uh, give mad props and respect to the uh, spring tournament committee who put together this flag set. It's actually a very fair flag set. It's uh, it's done in a way, in my opinion, where it doesn't necessarily always go to the veterans. Um, I think anyone can win these flags just due to the like uh, decision-making mid-game. And I, I sort of like that. I, I don't know if uh, everyone will, but um, I'm appreciative of the... It's always going to be the same flag set throughout the tournament. You don't need to you know relearn things. Uh, it's, it's always going to be the same. And you can adjust it to make it a little bit more spicy if you like. So it's 
it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm I'm having fun. Uh, I uh, I hope that uh, you know the spring tournament committee doesn't have to deal with you know uh, too much backlash from uh, anyone you know saying they're not enjoying themselves because uh, in the large majority of the community, I think, is uh, really appreciative of all the volunteers. All right. Well, now with that, I'll go to final thoughts. So, um, Cheesinator, let's start off with you. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll echo what Life Reboot said. Um, I'm really happy with the flags. Uh, from the minute I started practicing them, I was like, this is just a lot more fun than I've had with FFR like solo tournaments recently. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the practice time I spent around qualifiers and all that. Um, I think this is the best flag set we've had since I've been running, or even I, I watched 2019. I didn't play Spring Tournament 2019, but I think this is the best Spring Tournament flag set we've had in my era. Um, so really enjoyed this it felt balanced it felt like any party was viable um and it was really a skill testing um you could see the you know the best runners you know cream up to the, the top of the the barrel uh there in the in the qualifiers deadpool spells up and stuff putting up the times they did so um yeah i i've loved running this uh super grateful that the tournament staff has been really diligent even getting out like bicky broadcasts and stuff for when there's not quite a full staff but still letting people um see those restreams and enjoy the ffr action um thanks again to y'all for crewing today uh to life reboot for being such a good opponent being flexible i needed to do a reschedule to play today um and i'm looking forward to my next round opponent i think no matter who it ends up being um it's going to be a challenge and i'll need a whole new draft strategy because the matchup with every every given person and their relative skills and and strengths and weaknesses is different so um, i'm excited and i'm probably gonna have to practice a little bit more because like god i was jittery this whole round <laughs> all right well life reboot your final thoughts yeah just at, at the end of the day um i did feel like an underdog against a cheesinator uh, the first match that I did win was uh, entirely happenstance. He he lost uh, due to getting either baned or uh, some some instant kill through a ribbon uh, that let me slide in right behind him. Um, but you know the the skill set of all the players that are you know going to be in brackets is uh, commendable, and I wish you luck in the rest of the tournament as well as everyone who's in brackets. Thank you. All right, uh, again, it's gone wild. What's your final thoughts? Oh, yeah, thanks for uh, the kind words about the flags and the tournament as somebody on the planning committee. <laughs> uh, that's kind of what we were going for, is something that felt actually fair to play. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's been a fun tournament, fun watching and commentating. It's been, it's been fun. I think this is maybe our second or third time doing comms, hate, so always a pleasure. Um, and yeah, it's been... Uh, been a fun tournament all right and with that uh i'm time for me to go on the advertising spiel if you like what you saw uh toss runners a follow i think they kind of earned it for putting on a good show for us today uh also if you you know enjoyed the enjoyed the show come join us on the discord uh, you can find it via the ffr command or from the final fantasy randomizer.com website and uh for new players as was mentioned earlier in the stream we do have the boot camp coming up here, which is our new player introductory series. And also for anyone else out there interested, coming in mid-June, we have our first marathon coming up. We are accepting submissions for all kinds of different randomizers um, with the benefits going to, oh, I have to try and remember which, which charity, uh, it's a LGBTQ supporting charity. I'm trying to remember the name, and I will have that in a moment. Unless there it is. It's the the Liam Foundation is who we will be supporting. Uh, so if you would like to well submit a run for that, or even just get any information on that, uh, you can take a look in the marathon command, or just come into our Discord and check out the marathon discussion room. Uh, so, once again, thanks to Life Reboot and Cheesinator for putting on a good show for us tonight. And thanks to Ganon for jumping in the booth with me, or, well, for letting me jump in the booth with him, I should say. He was the first one to volunteer for it today. I just stepped up for other things. Um, and with that, we are going to go ahead and head on over to Speed Gaming 3 to the Crab Cakes versus Pickles and Beer match already in progress. With that, 
I will bid you all a good night, good day, and uh, adieu.